these are the kinds of problems we're going to be looking at with this. So when I'm talking about thinking abstractly, we're thinking a little differently. We're not solving for a missing number. We're going to simplify this equation for one of those variables. And when I look at the example in the book, it's asking to solve this for R. Divided by T. So I'm going to look, where is the R? It's right here. It's my goal, and my goal is to get it isolated. The other variables are still going to be there. They're just going to be on the other side of the equal sign from the R. So the T is being multiplied with the R right now. To get it away from the R, we need to do what then? Divide. So I'm going to rewrite this underneath without my coloring on it so we can see. If I divide the T from both sides, I end up with D over T is equal to R. Just like if I have a number over a number in a fraction, it equals 1. T over T equals 1. Because in theory, T is in there for some number, but whatever number it is, it's the same number every time I put it in there. T R over T is equal to 1. That means that this R is now basically by itself with its invisible 1 there, right? And then if I did t divided by t on the other side, that's it. I'm not solving for anything except I'm getting the variable that we were told to get by itself, by itself. Do you feel how this is where I'm talking about going abstract? It's not something we could count on our fingers or show with manipulatives. We're just kind of playing with variables and moving them around not what we normally think of as math. So we're going to keep going. And I know that this is done correctly because my R is isolated and here's my answer. I'm going to give some more problems here. What if we have x plus y equals z, and we want to solve for y? I'm just using my color coding to focus on this needs to be what's by itself at the end. Once I focus on that, I'm going to look at what else is on the side of the equal sign with it. X. And right now there's an x. To get this y by itself, we need to subtract. subtract it. And yes, I want you doing all of these steps just like I am. So x minus x is going to be 0, leaving us with just the y, y equals Z minus X. Did I get this by itself? Yes. yes. And on the other side, there's what our answer is. We have no idea what that really means because we don't know what those variables are standing for. Let's make the same problem slightly more challenging. What if that was X minus Y equals Z? And we were supposed to solve for y. Now here's the interesting thing. I need the y by itself. What did I not circle with it? That negative sign because I'm recognizing it is not going to be as simple as just taking that x away. We do the exact same first step we did up above. x minus x is still 0 but it's not leaving the y by itself. Oops, the minus x. Instead, that y right now has what with it? Negative. A negative one. And so to get that by itself, 
I need to divide by negative 1. Now, I just did a math shortcut, and I'm realizing I shouldn't have done that because you guys are still new to this. Let me, let me show you what I mean. I should have written it like this. Do we write that on, too? You can. And I'll show you what my shortcut was as I do this. I've got negative y divided by negative 1. Negative divided by negative is going to be positive. And negative 1 divided by negative 1 is turning it into a positive 1, leaving us with just the y. Over here, do you guys see how I put one big line and I just put negative 1 underneath that? Yeah. My shortcut there is I'm going to divide both of these things by negative 1. But my brain, as soon as I wrote it down in pen, thought, wait, these guys have only been in algebra for a few weeks. You should show them that this is really two steps. I have to divide every piece of this equation by the same thing to make it be equal. Because remember that idea of equations are like a scale, right? Z is positive, and I'm going to divide it by negative 1. That's going to turn it into a negative. negative. X is negative, and if I divide it by a negative 1, it's going to turn it into a positive. Okay, that would be the solution to the problem. Y is now positive and by itself. The other side of the equation has been adjusted and dealt with that negative 1. Now my shortcut here, and you guys can do this later, or you can do this now if it makes sense to you. I know if I divide this side by negative 1, I also have to divide everything on this side by negative 1. By drawing this big line underneath it, it's kind of the opposite of a parenthesis with distributive property. I know that I put that negative 1 under there, and I have to divide it into each of those terms. Do you see what I mean by it being a shortcut? I'm still going to say positive z divided by negative 1 would be negative z negative x divided by negative 1 would be positive, positive x. x, and then I can come back and do the other side. We love our shortcuts in math, and writing negative 1 once was my quick shortcut, but to remember that we have to divide all the things by it, you might want to write it this way as you guys are getting used to doing these problems. Okay. Okay, we are going to try some slightly more challenging problems than this. What if they have some numbers in them, but we're kind of just treating the number like another variable? I'm just going to draw a line because that got a little messy up there. Okay, the book has all the <coughs> variables. We have st plus 3t is equal to 6, and we want to solve for the s. You know me, I'm picking about my variables. I think s's start to look like fives, but it's an s. My t looks like a plus. And we need to focus on getting this one by itself. This again is where this is abstract thinking. I want you guys to take your concrete, I just want the answer heads and set it aside and realize we're just moving things around in this equation to get the S by itself. We're not solving for a specific number, okay? We want that S by itself, but we're gonna kind of ignore it for now because what else is on that side of the equal side? This 3T, let's just subtract it. Just picture all of these terms in the equation as just pieces of the equation that we can move around. What's going to be left on the left side of the equal sign? ST. ST is equal to 6 minus 3T. I'm going to divide by T. I just kind of did my shortcut again, and I did it for a reason, and I'm going to show you guys why in a moment. On the left side, it's going to make sense. T divided by T is 1. 
anything divided by itself is one, one. and that works with variables just like it does with numbers. What's left here is S. Now, can I do a little side over here and show you why I didn't do the long version? Because I looked at this and said, okay, I've got six minus three T. I need to divide T out of each part. Is there a T here? No. But there is here. Mm -hmm. It can't cancel out of this one and not cancel here. So if I did this and this, I can't do that same action to all of these. Up here, it was a negative one, and negative one can be divided into everything. T cannot be divided into six if that six doesn't have a T. So it's gonna have to stay a six and not change, and if it can't change, then this negative three T can't change. Because we look at this and we wanna get rid of this, right? But we can't do this if we can't also do something here. So this whole thing doesn't get separated out. We just put the T underneath there, and this is when it's like, oh, I feel like I should be able to do something else and be done, but it's done right here. Our S equals six minus three T over T. Because I can't do this one, I can't do this one either, because then my equation would be unequal. Okay? This just takes some practice. Do you guys see how I'm, it's, it's, it's challenging to think this way because it's not the way our brains have been trained. We've been trained to look for an answer. Questions? That's exactly why we can't do this. Yes. This one can be simplified, but this side cannot. We're just saying if I divided by t over here, I also have to divide by t over here. But I cannot simplify this side because we tried it and it didn't work with this one, so we just have to leave it as it is. It's actually keeping the balance. Did that answer your question also? That's why. Because there's no t with the 6 and I cannot do anything to the 6. So it stays. What about the other two right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do anything to one part of this side and not do it to the other part of this side. Oh. Hey. And since yeah. I can't do it to this one, I have to just leave it as being visible. That means it looks like we should be able to do more, but we can't. Oh, okay. That's too good. That's